explain. Now, there are different components of function. Components of function, which I had already told you. Now, types of functions. Types where function with arguments but no return value. This is first type which I have already done in this program. See, in this program we have done function with arguments. See, this function is having arguments but there is no return value because we have mentioned void. Function with arguments but no return value. Another type is function with arguments and return value. Where function will exhibit arguments as well as return value. This is second type. Or third, function with return value but no arguments. Function will return some value but it will not take any arguments. This is third type. Now fourth type function with no arguments and no return value. Where it is having it does not have either arguments or return value. So this is the simplest form of function, the last one. So we will discuss all of them. Uh, we already, we have already discussed this one. Now we'll continue with second one. Function with arguments and return value. See. In which both the, both of things are present, arguments as well as return value. We will modify this function. Here arguments are already mentioned. Now I will write here int. Now we have mentioned the return value over here int. So I need to take third variable where the result will be stored. I have taken c. I will write here c is equal to sum a comma b. And here I will write int instead of void in the definition as well. And here I don't need to print answer over here. Instead, I need to over here. I will write C because the result will be in C. And now I print printf. Oh, sorry, return Z. Now this is a complete program where function having both return value as well as arguments. Now I will let you explain the complete program. First of all, we have declared three variables a, b, c. Then we have mentioned a function with the return value int and with two arguments int comma int because both of them are of type integer. Now uh, we have input two variables a and b. Then this is function call. When a function returns something, then the result must be stored in some variable. So that's why we have mentioned c over here. c is equal to sum. Then this call is same as that of the previous function, sum a comma b, because it is having two arguments, a comma b. Fine. Now, when function call appears, the control goes from function call to directly function definition over here. It will jump over here. It will jump from here to here. Now, the value of A will be copied into X and the value of B will be copied into Y. Suppose we have taken two values. If A is 10 and B is 20, 10 will be copied into X and 20 will be copied into Y. I have already told you, these arguments which are in function call are called actual arguments. These are called where A and B are actual arguments. And 
in function definition x and y are where x and y are formal units right now the value of a and b will be copied to x and y now we'll take third variable z then we'll perform sum z is equal to x plus y and then we'll return z the value of z that is 30 10 plus 20 30 will be returned back to the function call from where it arrived so here 30 this function call will be replaced by 30 and 30 will be assigned to c fine now we'll print the value of c over here and then get ch fine in this program you just need to understand when function is having return value you need to return some answer and its type should be declared first like the z is also of type integer that's why i have mentioned int over here fine and the type of c which is capturing the value of z should also be of type int c c is of type int i hope you understand the program and the concept i'm taking very simple examples to let you understand properly so this is call by value this is called call by value with function having return value as well as arguments now we'll move further to the next type that is function with the return value but no arguments uh, first we need to execute this program we didn't execute it yet we'll save it and then we'll perform compile and then we'll run it it is asking the value of a and b i'll give some value like i have given 10 and 20 sum is equal to 30. we are getting the correct answer suppose if i skip something or like that suppose i skip semicolon over here then if i compile this program it will raise an error like this compile c it is saying expected semicolon before get ch see this line it is saying expected semicolon before get ch the errors are displayed in this section of this interface now i will put semicolon over here the error will be removed um, i will compile it again compile and then i will execute it it will give the results uh, if i give 15 and 20 the answer is 35 fine now next we'll discuss third type function with return value but no arguments Here we will remove the arguments. Then we don't need to get the arguments over here. We'll do we'll remove this part because it is not having any argument. Then that complete part will be mentioned in definition part of the function. I will replace the variable names error now we need to print over here because we are uh, no we uh, we'll perform this and return c once we'll be copied to c and then we'll print some see how it is working we have created just one variable in which the return value will be received 
int sum fine this is function declaration it is having no arguments but return value is there of type integer now this is function call since there are no arguments we don't need to input anything now c is equal to sum it is not having any argument when the result will get back to c we will print it see the definition in sum we have taken three variables a b and c we'll input them then we'll perform sum and then return c when this call appears the control goes to the function definition then it will input a and b we are doing over here then it will compute the sum and we will return c then result will go back over here in sum suppose it is 30 30 will be assigned to c and we'll print it this is also simple type uh, it depends upon situation how we need it uh, which type of function to use in which situation we have to uh, this is just the part i'm telling you uh, all types of functions but it depends on you on which situation uh, which function you have you have to use okay now we will execute it first we need to save it then compile and run since there is no error uh, 10 20 0 is equal to 30 fine now we will discuss fourth type that is function with no arguments and no return value in this kind of function we have to perform everything in function definition see how we can perform it void you can leave it empty or you can also mention void over here and no need to write this See, it becomes so simple because everything will be performed in function call. We just need to call the function like this. This function call. Everything will be done over here, and here we will write the printf statement for sum for displaying sum. and we will use the return statement because we don't need to return anything here we'll mention void see this is void sum void sum in get ch void sum and we'll perform all the calculation over here i think this code you understand very well now we will execute the program first we have to save it and then execute compile compile and enter a and b 10 20 answer is sum is equal to 30 fine i hope you understand all the programs now if you have any doubt you can message me or you can give comment underneath the video and uh, you have assignment for that now assignment is develop all programs using functions compute multiplication of two numbers uh, likewise i have done i have used all of these types to compute sum of two numbers now you will exercise them to compute multiplication of two numbers well these programs four programs should be there and another assignment is to compute factorial of a number using function 
function means user defined i'm not telling library functions user defined function so you can use any of these types and develop this program of computing factorial fine so uh, do these two assignments i will get back to you in the next lecture thank you